What's up, there, guys? Brian here at 3TR, and welcome to episode 210 of my weekly QA show, Top of People's Questions, where I answer all the awesome questions that you guys have sent me over this past week. This time, rather, we have a much bigger episode than we did last week, so I see that's a good thing, and I don't think we got any newbies. I think everyone coming back is regular, so welcome all back. Starting off with the first thing, question coming from usually the first person I always answer questions for, for at least for God, I don't know how many past episodes. Mr. Santico Scarpino, and you want to know, what is my opinion on you, Yevon? Well, I've never really been too big on religion in general, but I don't really agree with what you, Yevon, was doing. Ostensibly, it was just a big PR issue that they dealt with um, in terms of self, it, it, was, it was a constant chain of self-sacrificing. Ostensibly, what the Mayans were doing, in, in which you have these summoners which have this power and they need to sacrifice themselves in order to set up the conditions for the next and to come back in order to stop the killing for a period of about 10 years and so basically they were it, you haven't required a human sacrifice every 10 years and ostensibly it's going to come from someone who has all this power as a summoner so there is that so I didn't agree with it, so I'm kind of happy that Titus kind of came along, came up with a new plan in order to pretty much end the cycle, which I thought was a great idea. Next question is, would I undo Spider-Man's deal with the devil? Uh, I kind of know what you're talking about. I have i can't remember when it took place, but it, it dealt with him going into like a semi-different reality, and then when he came back, like, it, it, took, it took place, if I remember correctly, during Civil War where he revealed his identity and he recognized, like, okay, now that everyone knows who I am, my family members are in danger, and I think the devil said, oh, okay, I'll, I really gotta apologize for the, for the stupid chats. Uh, and the devil says, I will wipe out all the people that know your identity, so everything will be back the way it was, and, but you can't be with Mary Jane, if I remember correctly. I think that was the deal. Uh, uh, if, if he wants it undone, fine, I'd do it, but if he doesn't, then, you know, that's his, that's his deal. Next question is, have I played the Deadpool video game? Yes, I have played it twice. I own it on both PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. I think it's an awesome game. The next three questions are coming from Matthew Vader. Welcome back. And you want to know, who is the better assassin team? Garrus and Thane from Mass Effect or Deathstroke and Deadshot from the Batman series? I think that Garrus and Thane are a much better team because they actually can work together. They're used to it. Deathstroke and Deadshot very much are in competition with each other, and so I think they wouldn't want to work together too well, and especially since they're two different types of assassins. Deadshot really doesn't like to get up close and personal. Deathstroke does. However, Garrus can do both despite him being mostly a sniper and Thane being an up-close fighter. So I think it's the fact that Thane and Garrus are a much better team and they're used to working together that would give them the advantage and they would focus on taking one member out and then they would focus on taking the other one out. So I think that Garrus and Thane would definitely be able to win. Next question is, who would win in a fight between Kratos from God of War 3 versus Vegeta from Super Saiyan 2? Well, as powerful as Kratos is, Vegeta can blow up the Earth, and I seriously doubt that he can breathe in space. Now, I know that, you know, Saiyans technically can't breathe in space either, but I'm sure if he got, like, one of those sand ships and he blew up the Earth from afar and, you know, I guess he would end up killing everybody. But, yeah, Vegeta is way more powerful. I think the only advantage that Kratos has is that as long as it's an underworld, he finds a way to crawl his way out of the underworld even though he's died. Because if you've noticed, I think he's died in all the God of War games, and he just kind of climbs his way out of Hades and he's back to life. So I think so I think Vegeta would definitely be able to win. He's just too way overpowering. The next question is if we were to switch these characters, if I were to switch Chris and Sheva with Leon and Ada, could they beat Wesker? If the right conditions were put in place, I think they could beat Wesker. I think that they're not as good of a team as, say, Chris and Jill. Uh, I think they're they're unique and flexible enough that they probably would be able to work pretty well together. I think it's just making sure the conditions were set up in the right situation. Because you got to remember, in order for Chris and Sheva to take down Wesker, uh, they had to inject him with that vaccine and so if you inject too much of him and his body starts to break down and he starts weakening then I do think that Leon and Ada would definitely have the opportunity and the chance to take down Wesker. The next two questions come from JDS4696 you want to know do you think Mortal Kombat 10 will eventually have Michael Myers as a playable character? 
It's possible. I mean, we now have Predator and Alien. We now have Jason. I don't know why they don't add Freddy since Freddy was in uh, Mortal Kombat 9. So I guess adding Michael Myers is definitely a possibility, but you know, I'm not going to hold my breath. I mean, I'm not going to pay an extra amount of money just to play as these playable characters. I don't need them. I'm, I'm fine with all the characters that I do have, but uh, yeah, it's certainly possible. Next question is, when do I think the next Resident Evil title will be announced? Uh... I don't know, hopefully this year. I mean, we just got through Revelations 2. Uh, I really thought they were going to announce Resident Evil 7 at last year or last year's Tokyo Game Show. So they could announce it this year, either at E3 or another game convention, or most likely Tokyo Game Show. Capcom usually likes to do their big reveals at Tokyo Game Show, so that would be my bet. Your next question is, do I think that Wii U Legend of Zelda will go straight to the next Nintendo system? I have no idea. I have not played a Legend of Zelda game on a Nintendo system since Majora's Mask on Nintendo 64. So I could care less what they're going to do with the next Zelda game. If it's going to be on this current system, fine. If they want to put it on the next one, fine. I have no plans on buying another Nintendo system, so it's not really my, my issue. The next three questions come from Dr. Hino419, and you want to know who is my favorite Metal Gear Solid 5 character. I have no favorite Metal Gear Solid 5 character because I didn't like the game at all. In fact, I don't like it so much, I don't even acknowledge it as a as a part of the franchise. It's Konami's project. It's not Kojima's, it's not part of Kojima's Metal Gear. That's like the first step of Konami's Metal Gear. So, they're two different worlds. Next question, if I were to wield a certain power, how would I try to upgrade it? Train, kill people, etc.? Well, I think training is always a good thing. I mean, I would like my powers to kind of rise just like, you know, Saiyan Tzu and Dragon Ball Z. I mean, they their powers increase, like, the more they get beat up, but they also can increase their power by training. So I think training, uh, it's just like working out. The more you work out, the stronger you get. So I think that, that seems to be the natural way of how you upgrade yourself. The next question is, if I was a DLC character, what game would I like to be in, and would I like to have my own story mode for a specific DLC? If I want to be a DLC character, I probably would want to be a DLC character, I don't know, maybe for Resident Evil. Maybe pick like a character that we haven't seen in a while, or pick a brand new character. And yeah, sure, have a different like side mission, like have me follow like, you know, the events of what main Resident Evil characters are, are, are doing. Maybe I can, you know, maybe they make the situation easier for me to escape. I think that would be a pretty cool way to add me as a DLC character with my own story. The next question comes from Corey Roloff, and you want to know, am I buying either Terra Wave Unfold or Gravity Rush Remastered for PlayStation 4 since they are both Sony exclusives imported over from the PlayStation Vita? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is the first time I've heard of them. Uh, I've not played them on the PlayStation Vita, so... Thanks for bringing that to my attention, so if I actually have the time to play new games, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind uh, picking it up. The next question comes from Nick the Ninja, and you want to know, who is my favorite Batman actor? Oh, that's easy. Uh, it's Kevin Conroy. He was probably the first Batman I ever had a chance to watch, long before I saw Batman Forever, which that was the first Batman movie I saw. But in terms of the first Batman that I was exposed to, it was the animated series Batman, and he still remains the best Batman to this day. The next set of questions come from Nero Season. Uh, I'm real sorry. These are the last questions, and you want to know what do I think of the console version of the new Final Fantasy Dissidia game having over 50 playable characters? I think that is an incredible idea because that is going to make pretty much making a live action version of my Versus series matchups a lot easier to do, which I do take footage from those screenshots. But they, they just need to tell us when the. Sorry, our car just went past. They just need to tell us when this game is coming out for console. I know it's already out there in Japan in arcade form. Just bring it over to the States or release it across the world, put it on PlayStation 4 only, and it's a done deal. I mean, I'm already waiting for this game to be, to be pre-ordered. I'm, I'm ready to go. You can even make a, a crazy, over-expensive collector's edition version of it, and I'll pay for it. I mean, as much as I haven't really had a chance to play Dissidia on my PlayStation P PSP, which sadly they're like discontinuing it from the network for some reason, but I, I can understand why, I'd love to play a Dissidia game, a fighting game for Final Fantasy on the consoles. It looks incredible, so what's the wait? And last question is, what Final Fantasy character do I want in it? Or technically... I don't, 50 characters, uh, you know, I, I, I don't really care. Add most of the roster from the Golden Age of Final Fantasies, mainly from Final Fantasies 1 to, I'd say, 10. I mean, I know they're going to throw in some people from 12, which I'm not a big fan of, and I know they're going to throw in some people from Final Fantasy 13, I'm not a fan of, but heck, they could throw in some characters from Final Fantasy 15, you know, uh, 
we, we know who they are, we know what they're capable of, I don't see why you can't add them in, so I don't really care what they do, but chances are they're probably going to add the characters that I want to see in the game already, so I have nothing to worry about. And after that, those are all the questions that you guys sent for this episode, I'd like to thank all of you guys for making this episode possible. If you guys like this video, feel free to like, comment down below, and please subscribe to check my future episodes of people's questions, so make sure you get your questions into me before next Wednesday before I start filming this episode. Make sure you limit it to only three questions per person. Like always, thank you guys for watching, you're awesome, and I will see you next time.